Imagine your liver as a smoke-hilled engine room, and in a credible 14-day intervention, liver fat dropped 43.8% when carbs fell below 30 g day even while the scale barely moved. That's because you're not losing weight first. You're cutting the supply line that keeps your liver turning carbs into new fat. If that fat factory stays on, the damage stays quiet but constant. Higher insulin, rising resistance, more inflammation, and energy that crashes after meals. Here's the twist. Your waist can look the same while your liver is clearing, so you quit in week one, right before the shift becomes real. Stick with me, because I'll show you the early signs, what you feel, and what you can measure when liver fat starts to disappear. Over time, that smoke in the engine room doesn't just look ugly, it rewires your metabolism in silence. Doctors call it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and it often travels with insulin resistance. You may feel nothing until you do. Stubborn cravings, brain fog, a heavy crash after meals. The hopeful part is this can turn fast when the fuel line changes, and you don't need the scale to prove it. In the next few days, you'll notice the first signals. When liver fat starts to disappear, your body doesn't celebrate with confetti on the scale. Instead, it changes the rules of the game. Picture. That smoke-hilled engine room we talked about, the first victory is cleaner air inside the machine, not a smaller number on the bathroom floor. In the first 24 hours, the headline is simple. You stop feeding the fat-making factory. Cut back the steady stream of sugar and refined starch, and your liver has less reason to run de novo lipogenesis, the pathway that turns extra carbs into new fat. That's why a widely discussed 14-day carbohydrate-restricted intervention in people with obesity and fatty liver reported liver fat dropping by about 44%, even though average weight loss was modest. Real life, day one can feel anticlimactic or weird. You might pee more, feel a little foggy, or get cranky at 4 p.m., like your brain is staging snack protests. That's not failure. That's the fuel system being rewired. The win on day one is simply this. The warehouse stopped accepting new boxes. Days two to three are the flip. Your liver stops acting like a storage unit and starts acting like a furnace. With lower insulin signaling, it becomes easier to release stored fat and the liver leans harder on fat oxidation, burning what's already there, instead of wrapping it up and shelving it. This is where many people suddenly notice, wait, I'm not thinking about food every 10 minutes. Hunger becomes a message, not a siren. The catch is that some people also meet the unglamorous side effects. Headache, fatigue, light dizziness, leg cramps which is often your body asking for electrolytes, not a dramatic monologue about your willpower. Add salt to meals, drink water, and keep your protein steady, and the flip feels less like a punishment and more like a switch clicking into place. If you've ever quit a plan because days two and three felt off, comment day three so you remember this moment next time. Days four to seven are the scale trap week, the one that makes perfectly reasonable adults do irrational things like quit on day six and declare metabolism a scam. Here's what's happening. Water shifts and inflammation changes can hide progress, and your body may be cleaning the engine room before it remodels the lobby. Even when the mirror isn't impressed yet, many people notice practical upgrades. Less post-meal heaviness, fewer cravings that feel urgent, and energy that doesn't crash like a phone battery stuck at 12%. Researchers studying fatty liver commonly track insulin measures and liver enzymes because the liver is tightly tied to insulin resistance, and improvements often show up there before your genes throw a party. So during this week, don't make weight your only scoreboard. Track what you can actually feel. Steadier mornings, calmer appetite, better sleep, fewer I-need-sugar-right-now emergencies. The value of week one is proof without applause. And it matters because liver fat isn't just a cosmetic issue. It's a metabolic traffic jam. Your liver decides whether fuel gets stored, burned, or pushed back into the bloodstream. So when it's overloaded, the whole system feels louder. More swings, more cravings, more fatigue. This is why clinicians track liver enzymes and insulin glucose patterns, and why studies use imaging to measure liver fat directly. If you've ever been told your labs were a little off, 
This is the moment where watching turns into doing. Days 8 to 14 are where the invisible starts becoming obvious. Stay consistent and the liver keeps clearing. Less incoming carb means less new fat made and more stored fat gets burned or shipped out. People often describe a lighter feeling that isn't just weight, less puffiness, a calmer stomach after meals, and a brain that stops buffering like bad Wi-Fi. That same 14-day carbohydrate-restricted research also reported improvements in insulin measures and markers linked to liver stress, despite participants not needing extreme calorie restriction to see changes. Other clinical work shows the liver can respond quickly to a changed fuel environment, sometimes within days, which is exactly why quitting early is such a tragedy. You walk out right as the smoke starts to clear. If you're still here in week two, hit like or subscribe because you're doing the part most people skip, staying long enough for biology to catch up. After two weeks, the story becomes maintenance, not magic. You don't need to live like a monk, and you definitely don't need to treat low carb like a personality. Think of it like a thermostat. You're controlling the conditions that make liver fat accumulate. The long-term win comes from boring, powerful habits, keeping liquid sugar rare, keeping ultra-processed carbs occasional, eating enough protein to stay satisfied, getting fiber from real plants, and moving daily so your muscles keep pulling fuel out of your blood. Walking is underrated. Strength training is like raising your metabolic rent so sugar and fat have somewhere useful to go. Sleep is the quiet MVP because a tired brain negotiates with donuts like it's signing a peace treaty. One important note, if you're on diabetes meds or insulin, if you're pregnant, or if you have significant liver disease beyond fatty liver, don't freestyle this. Talk with a clinician because improvements can happen fast enough to change medication needs. And for everyone else, here's the simple answer to our title. When liver fat starts to disappear, you often feel it before you see it. The smoke clears. The cravings quiet. The crashes fade. And once your body remembers it can run on more than sugar, staying consistent gets easier. Because you're no longer fighting the engine, you're finally working with it. Subscribe real quick. If you like science without the fluff, you'll fit in here. Liver fat doesn't melt off with motivation speeches. It drops when the inputs change and you repeat them long enough. The scale might drag its feet, but your body usually gives earlier clues. Fewer post-meal crashes, calmer hunger, better mornings, and less random snack noise. If you want something objective, measure your waist once a week and use labs with your clinician when it makes sense. Keep it simple. Ditch liquid sugar, cut back refined starch, hit your protein, and stick to real food. Drink water, don't fear salt, and make the transition feel normal instead of miserable. Walk every day, add a couple short strength sessions, and you give that fuel somewhere useful to go. If you're on diabetes or blood pressure meds, get guidance needs can change. Drop a comment, day 1, day 3, or day 14. What shifted first for you?